Hey guys and welcome to this tutorial on struts 2. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded any tutorials. Things have been crazy busy in the last couple of months for me. I haven't been able to either create new videos or to respond to your comments. But I'm really grateful for the fact that you folks have continued to watch and like the tutorials, continue to spread the word, subscribe and all that good stuff. So thank you for all your support. Hopefully I should start getting some more free time to make new videos. I'll also set up a poll to get your opinion on what topics and technologies to cover next. So keep an eye on the Java Brains Facebook page where I'll be setting up the poll shortly. Okay, so let's start with the topic of today, which is interceptors in Struts 2. So if you look back at all the things that we've learned in Struts 2, we've realized that it's much easier to write an MVC application in Struts 2 versus without using some kind of an MVC framework. Like, you know, if you're using just servlets or JSPs, there are a lot of things that Struts 2 does that kind of eliminates a lot of work that we, have, we would have to do if we have to write everything on our own. For example, you know, we, we looked at a lot of things that kind of happen automatically, the out of the box feature, so to speak. So if you look at all these automatic features in Struts 2, some of them are, you know, transferring of parameters from your struts form to your member variables in the action class. And the other thing we saw was validation. We did not really have to make calls to validation. There was already a validation framework in place. You just had to supply the validation logic. And there are a lot of stuff which we haven't even covered yet, but all these features just come out of the box in struts too. You don't have to code each and everything yourself. And hey, that's the advantage of using a framework like Struts2. But then the question is, who is actually doing all that, right? Who or what does all the work? We don't really bother about it because it's taken care of for us, but it's a good thing to understand what's happening there so that, you know, we can, we can write our own, uh, you know, uh, out of the box features that we use everywhere in our application. So the answer, of course, is interceptors, if you haven't guessed already. So interceptors, are, you know, they come with struts too, and a lot of these features, the quote unquote automatic features, are actually implemented in the framework by using interceptors. So, you remember this picture? We actually looked at this in the very beginning of the series. So, this is kind of like a high level picture of a struts two application. And um, here we have our uh, struts controller, the XML that we write. We have our action classes, we have our JSPs, and uh, here's a client who's outside the whole block over here. But the one thing that we have kind of kept aside so far is this block over here for interceptors. So one thing I had told you in the, you know, in the high level picture video is that this thing is has always been there in our application. We haven't really done anything to turn it off. And this has always been there. It is just that we haven't really thought about it because all these other things just work out of the box. But this is what we're gonna be looking at in this tutorial. So how have we been using interceptors if we have been using it all along? Where have we specified the interceptors? So if you look at our struts XML, right? This is our uh, stretch XML that we've been using in our example. Notice that we have a package over here named default and a package called search. The one thing that's common to both these packages is this extends tag over here. See here, it extends, starts default, even this guy extends, starts default. So what does extends really mean over here? We know in the Java terminology that you know, you extend a class, which means you you get some of the uh, some of the functionality, some of the logic in the parent class into the class that you are extending, right? That's the concept of inheritance. But here we are not talking about classes; we are talking about a struts package, and we know that the package is not really a Java package. So even though we have the name called package, it's not anything related to the Java package. So the same way, the extends here has got no relation with the, you know, the Java extends, but then they kind of mean the same. What it means is there is already a package called struts default. So we have a package called default. This is our package that we have written. There is this package called struts default and our package is actually 
extending from it. So what do you mean by extend? So in the case of classes, we know that the extend means in, you know, inheriting the functionality and inheriting the variables and the methods. But in the case of package here, we're talking about struts configuration. So what we extend here is actually the configuration. So whatever configuration is in struts default is inherited to our default package configuration. So our package configuration has an action configuration, right? So we have this action tag, which configures how this action is bound to the right JSPs, depending on the return. There is some amount of configuration in the struts default, which we are inheriting, which is not there over here, but we are actually getting it from the struts default. So we have to now take a look at what we are actually extending. You know, what is the configuration that we are getting from struts default? So where do we see the struts default package? So it's actually bundled in the struts jar that we have included in our project. So if you look at our tutorial finder project, we have added the struts jar in our library. So if you open the libraries, see here we have a struts2 library and inside that we have the struts2 core jar. So the configuration is actually inside this jar. Uh, when you expand this, you see a struts default.xml in the root of the jar. So just open that. And if you don't see the source here, make sure you're you have added the struts source into your Eclipse source path. I have covered that in a previous tutorial. So once you add that, any any file that you open over here, you should be able to see the source. So you see here the struts default.xml, this has come in our struts jar and it has a lot of configuration which is related to how struts behaves out of the box. So there are a lot of bean tags over here. Let's not worry about that, but here's what we are interested in. You see here, we have a package declaration, package name equals struts default. So this is a package called struts default and it's been called an abstract. So the abstract is also a similar terminology, which means that this package cannot exist on its own. It is meant to be extended. So inside this package, you see a whole lot of configuration. So you have a, an element called result types, which has a whole lot of result types. You have an element called interceptors, and you have a whole lot of interceptor declarations over here. You see here, there are so many interceptor declarations. And then you also have something called as an interceptor stack. Uh, we're gonna come to this a little bit later, but I just wanted you to take a look at this file and see that these are the interceptors that do all the magic of struts too. So you have interceptors for every out of the box feature that we have seen so far. And uh, we have an interceptor called params, which are involved in you know transferring the parameters. There are a whole lot of other stuff which we haven't even looked at, but I just wanted to show you that this is where all the configuration is present. And our struts XML does not have to define all of these because it's already been configured in the default. All we have to do is extend this package, this package, struts default. We just have to extend it in our struts XML. And then all this configuration is a becomes a part of our package configuration. So when we look at our struts XML here, we don't have any of the, you know, the struts functionality related configuration. We just have the configuration that's specific to our MVC application. And then all the other stuff, we just get it by using the extends. So does this mean that since we are extending the configuration and making our own configuration, is it possible to override some of the default features of struts too? You bet you can, and that is a whole different topic. We can change the way struts2 works in a whole lot of ways. But uh, for now, just consider that this is, this is something that's been done to help us uh, not having to do all the default wiring every time. It's all taken care of in the struts default, and we just extend it, okay? So next, I'm gonna talk about three different concepts that help us understand the whole architecture of the interceptors. This is gonna be a high level conceptual explanation and then the next tutorial, the next video that I'm gonna upload will cover a lot of the hands-on thing, but I believe that this concept is important to understand. So we're gonna just quickly go over these three concepts. So the first concept that I wanna talk about is called cross-cutting concerns. 
Now, cross-cutting concerns is a very common, commonly used terminology, and uh, it's it, it's applicable in a lot of different areas in programming. What this actually means is that, say, you have uh, you know a consumer that's accessing three different uh, you know provider uh, modules. So, say this this module needs data from three different modules and all the three modules have some common functionality that that has to happen before they do their work so this common functionality could be something like logging or could be something like you know uh, audit uh, related functionality something like that which is not really specific to the module but this has to be done anyway for this functionality to go you know to go do its work later so this kind of a common functionality is usually called as cross-cutting functionality. So what this means is this is not really a concern of the individual modules. This is a common cross-cutting concern. And if you have cross-cutting concerns, the normal design that we follow when we are designing all these modules is to isolate out the cross-cutting concern. So we actually take that out and have it as a separate front module and then once this does its work then the actual modules do what they're actually supposed to do so let's say this is this is logging right so when when you know uh, a service calls the service say the logging happens up front in a separate module and then these modules do not really worry about logging they do their own functionality and now you add a fourth module later which also needs logging it doesn't have to do any of the logging also because we have taken this out. So this is a this is actually a very common concept. It's called cross-cutting concerns. And you usually see this in the, you know, in programming design, where you actually take out the cross-cutting concern into its own module so that the individual modules are not burdened with doing logging or auditing or any of any, you know, those kind of functionalities. Okay, so that's the first concept. The second concept. We know Tomcat is a servlet container. I'm sure we all know what a servlet container means. It's it's a container where you can deploy your applications which use JSPs and servlets. Now, when you write applications for the servlet container, there are a couple of components which you normally write your logic in, which are servlets and filters. So servlets are usually the place where you write your business logic and filters are the place where you typically write cross-cutting concerns. Say, for example, logging. Uh, you know, if you want every servlet to log a message, what you typically do is you wouldn't write the logging code in the servlet. You would write it as a filter and then configure the filter to do the logging before the servlet is called. So, so what this would mean is that if you're writing a web application, even if it's an MVC application, and say you have some cross-cutting concerns, the best place to put those cross-cutting concerns is, is the filter, right? But the problem is, if we use struts to MVC, we cannot really put cross-cutting concerns uh, in the filter. Well, it can, but it's not really very clean. And the reason for that is, if you remember, we have actually configured our struts to controller as a filter, right? In the you know in the first tutorial where we actually set you know everything up and we configure a struts to web application we actually write a filter in the web xml so let's open up our web xml so you see here we actually have written a filter which is struts2. So the class, the filter class is the struts prepare and execute filter, which is actually a struts class. And we have configured this filter mapping for all URLs. So any URL access, we want this filter to get executed. So what this means is we actually have struts configured over here as a filter. So if you look here, this is where we have configured our struts controller. So we talked about two things. One, there is something called cross-cutting concerns, which you would want to isolate out. And uh, the second thing is in Tomcat, filters are the way to write cross-cutting concerns. But then we have struts configured as the filter. 
So what this actually means is struts itself is a cross-cutting concern. The struts framework actually acts as a cross-cutting concern. So you have a filter that intercepts every request and then struts does its thing. It looks at the configuration and it says, okay, this is the request. This is where it has to go to. This is the action class that needs to execute. And it completely takes care of the control. So the filter, which is actually supposed to be used as a cross-cutting concern is actually being used by struts too as the actual application framework, right? So struts too as a framework itself behaves as a cross-cutting concern. I hope this concept is clear. Even if it's not very clear, it's fine. I just wanted to put the seed of this thought into your head so that you can actually see how the struts to framework is actually leveraging the concept of filters to do the whole, you know, the framework activity. So now the question is, if struts2 is actually being used as a filter for cross-cutting concerns, how do you write your own cross-cutting concerns, right? So the Tomcat container, you know, the servlet container, all the specs say, hey, we know you need cross-cutting concerns written separately. We don't want to, you know, pollute your business logic with the cross-cutting concerns. So I'm giving you this nice feature of filters which you can use to write cross-cutting concerns. But then if you use struts2, struts2 is, you know, it takes it up. You know, struts2 is configured as a filter. So it takes up the functionality of the filter. Now, if you're using struts2 and you need to write cross-cutting concerns, how would you do it? Well, the answer is, of course, interceptors. So that's the reason why struts2 has interceptors. If you're writing an application in struts2 and you want to record all these cross-cutting concerns, the ideal way is by using interceptors. Because first of all, using interceptors, I believe is a bit better than using filters because you have a little bit more a richer functionality. And the second thing is it kind of integrates so well with struts2 that you, it's not really a choice. If you're using struts2, you are int using interceptors first of all. And then, you know, it's also easier to write your own interceptors than mess around with filters. So that's the reason why interceptors are like a uh, you know, very core feature of struts2 and this is something that we're really gonna explore in the next set of tutorials. So to quickly recap, the automatic features in struts2 are actually done by interceptors. They work behind the scenes, we haven't really looked at them as of yet, but that's what does all the work. And uh, how it's actually happening is by using the struts default. We extend the struts default and that's how all this interceptor logic gets added to our configuration. If we do not extend struts default, we don't get that configuration. So that's another thing you have to keep in mind. So the struts default extends is what's doing all this work. And then interceptors help isolate the common cross-cutting concerns from individual you know, action classes. So that's a good thing. And in the servlet container, filters are the ones which actually provide the cross-cutting concerns. But since we configure the struts2 framework itself as a filter, we use the help of the struts2 framework for the actual cross-cutting concerns and the help is provided by means of interceptors. So I hope the concept of interceptors in general is very clear. We're gonna look at uh, you know some hands-on and look at how interceptors actually configure all this thing in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.